What's up, y'all? I'm James with Microvelum, and this is Wood Hacks. This is the first of a five part mini series focused on 2D drawing instructions. Oh, heck yeah. Stay put, it's time to get hacking. All right, how many of you find yourself spending too much time manually dimensioning, notating, and detailing your shop drawings? How many times have those manual details been forgotten? And how many times have those forgotten details caused miscommunication or worse, costly mistakes on a project? Well, I'm gonna show you how you can automate that using Microvellum's 2D drawing instructions. I'm a huge advocate for these because they allow me to automate much of the drafting process. That means I can create clean, detailed, and informative shop drawings without all the manual work. And this also means I can create standards across the board for all my drafters and engineers and help eliminate mistakes. Taking advantage of the drawing instructions is a great way to streamline the way you work. In this mini series, I'll show you how to add hinges to your 2D elevations and sections. Adding hinges is a good example of some basic principles to help you get on your way. So in part one of this mini series, I'm gonna give you six preparation tips to use before you start automating your drawing processes. Let's get started. Alrighty then, tip number one, level of control. Do you want these to be controlled at the project wizard, the global variables, product prompts or sub-assembly prompts, or do you need control them at multiple levels? If so, think about how those tie together and start building from there. Tip number two, static or parametric. Do your drawing instructions require static or formulated values or objects? In some cases, you may need both. Think through different scenarios and come up with a way to work through those situations. Tip number three, drawing instruction type. Are you drawing text, dimensions, shapes, blocks? If drawing blocks, what blocks do you need to create? Make sure you know what type of drawing instruction you need to use and what else might be needed for it. Tip number four, visibility. Do you need to print these on your shop drawings or are they for internal purposes only? You can set the tokens to use specific layers to control your print options. Tip number five, origin and placement. Think of how you're gonna locate your drawing instructions. For example, when using items such as hardware blocks, think of how those hardware items are already being located and use a base point that's gonna be easy to reference. Tip number six, test. It's important to test your drawing instructions and controls prior to saving them back to your library. Once you've tested, save a single product back to your library to take advantage of a cool hack when working in Library Designer. It has to do with copy and paste. Okay, so just to drive all these tips home, level of control, static or parametric, drawing instruction type, visibility, origin and placement, and test. Doing all the prep work up front will make this process a lot simpler. And you'll have greater success adding drawing instructions to your 2D elevations and sections. That'll do it for part one of our Wood Hacks mini series on 2D drawing instructions. Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon in part two. Until then, keep hacking, my friends. <laughs> Taking advantage of the 2D, oh my freaking crap. Adding hinges is a grud, uh, a grud to help you get on, to help get you on your way. Taking advantage of <laughs> you know what it is. Formulated objects or values. Do your drawing instructions require mm, do over. <laughs> Tip number, whoa, that's gonna require two hands. <laughs> I was good. I was good and then I screwed it up. <laughs>